are the trees regarding our gender identity and sexuality. When there's no place like home, empty air and empty establishment. For your civil rights Out on the cruel Streets to night I'm joined today by two women Who are taking the entertainment business by storm uh, My good friend uh, Kate Duggan uh, Siobhan Duggan good, uh, Welcome Siobhan and apologies for that And my also my good Kate, uh, friend uh, Kate as well So welcome uh, to LGBTQ plus life. Thanks. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah. Siobhan, I'm going to start with yourself. Mm. It's not unusual, but it is not the most common to have two women uh, on the business side of a uh, uh, of productions. Can you just share with listeners, how did you venture into uh, that particular side of it? Well, I've worked on and off in theatre for most of my life and I did act briefly, but discovered that it wasn't where I wanted to be. And I'm much more technical and much more backstage production, direction, that kind of thing. So I've always worked in that space. Um, that's kind of outside my main job. Um, and when I got to know Kate, I have a lot of contacts in theatre and around the country from amateur theatre. So I have access to a theatre and we got talking a lot about burlesque and burlesque shows and we thought that there would be a space to bring it to a stage with all the bells and whistles that come with, with doing it on a proper stage as opposed to in a bar where you're limited with your technical stuff. So um, we decided to form the company and see where it went basically. Yeah. So you're a woman after my own heart that much prefers to be out of the limelight but still in charge of something. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I like to be in charge. Kate will tell you that. <laughs> yeah. um, and just uh, so uh, the, the radio listeners won't see this, but the video uh, viewers will. We're joined by a third party who's there behind you. Uh, tell uh, people about who is that and what is their role in the, uh, the overall production. This is Brando and he's my asshole dog. Um, I got him about a year, just over a year ago. Um, so he's about 14 months old. And because I got him during COVID and I was in the house so much, I, he goes everywhere with me. Mm -hmm. So he comes to the theatre for tech days, he comes to rehearsals. And we do have hopes that at some stage, we'll actually get him on stage as part of one of the performances. You've taken, he wants uh, to come on the handbag. <laughs> you've anticipated my next question. Oh, is, he, is, the, is Brando a performer? <laughs> well, really, mm, soon we, to be. So. We think so, yeah. He's got elements of it. Yeah. He's he has taken part in photo shoots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kate, I'm going to come to yourself now. We had you on uh, some weeks ago with uh, our uh, great friend Evoca Reaction, um, and I know that you're a performer, and we'll come to that uh, shortly in the program. But how did you come to be involved in the business side of it? We appreciate you're a uh, a close personal friend of uh, Siobhan, but. Um, they're not always, um, how would I put it, they're all not always sympathetic. Uh, so uh, um, do you see yourself more of a performer or uh, do you see yourself more as a business person or is it still a balancing act at the moment? Um, it's definitely still a balancing act. I do see myself as a businesswoman. Um, I'm in the middle of setting up another company for myself to work and then obviously doing setting up candlelight cabaret here with Siobhan has really got me into the business side of theatre and mm -hmm. um, I've always been involved in theatre since I was a small kid I went to all the stage schools as growing up I did acting in college I've been in and out of theatre and performing my whole entire life so being involved in the back in the background and producing the shows just kind of fell into my lap and it made sense mm -hmm. to I, continue going I, with it. 
can I develop on that question? Because as a performer, you would be very familiar with what we would call the uh, the Weinsteinization of um, uh, of show business, where predatory men try and take advantage of innocent women, or not so innocent women, but. <laughs> is it the same on the business side of it, where they see two women coming along and they thought, oh yeah, we could stiff them on the price of the theatre or the drinks or the uh, um, the lights or the cameras or whatever? What's your experience in that regard? Um, I think there is an element to that, mm -hmm. but myself and Siobhan um, were very savvy. Uh -huh. Siobhan in particular is very savvy when it comes to the money side of things mm -hmm. and I'm very savvy in the I know how much things should be mm -hmm. so it's very hard for them to try they, they might attempt to mm -hmm. get one up on us but it never works yeah we're also it's very fortunate in the likes that we work with people like Bella Agogo who you interviewed there several months yeah. back Yes. And Bella is is a great resource for us in the fact that she's very professional what she does. She's always a great artist, but also she has produced her own shows. And if we feel there's something wrong or there's something going on that we're not sure about, we have the likes of her or we have the likes of Gemma, who works with um, the Dirty the Circus Dirty. Ball, and mm -hmm. she's a producer in her own right as well. So we would talk to those people as well, and they would always be very honest with us mm -hmm. um, with regards to the theatre and the technical stuff because I have a very good personal relationship with the people in the moat, that wouldn't happen. They're 100% they're fair to us. And in fact, give us probably a better deal than they would give other people because of my relationship with them. But yeah, I mean, we have seen shades of it where we have been quoted astronomical prices for stuff and it's like, yeah, not a chance. Have you ever had uh, problems getting invoices paid or uh, what do you, uh, how do you work this? Do you have to get paid no, up front no. or what's the situation? No, the theatre basically, the theatre do all the box office. So that's down to them. That's not down to us. Mm -hmm. So that kind of takes the onus of that off us. It means we don't have to organise the bookings. Mm -hmm. And then about two weeks after the show, the theatre pay us our, our cut of whatever, the, whatever the, the percentage was taken on the door that night. Mm -hmm. So we've never had any problems with that. Mm -hmm. And, and then adding marketing or something is all cash on the night. Yeah. Coming back to uh, the performers, uh, uh, Kate, in the sense that uh, are you involved in the booking side or uh, the talent spotting or anything of that nature? Or do people nat naturally gravitate because you're one of the few um, companies that are noted for doing this type of entertainment? Um, we so we tend to put out casting calls around the burlesque mm. and cabaret communities and stuff and then people will send us in videos or mm. if there's a particular for performer that i would be interested in having on the stage that i might know from other shows um we might get in i'll talk to siobhan about them and then we might get in contact with them and get them to send us on videos because we don't want to blind cast anyone of we make sure mm. We make sure that we have at least seen some of their acts. It may not be the act that they perform for us, but we need to know what they're like as a performer before booking them. Yeah. And we would both we would both have an agreement that yeah. if I say no or if Kate says no, then that person is gone. There's no arguing. Like we, we both have to agree a hundred percent that we want them in. Yeah. The next yeah. Something I've noticed again from the earliest times I was talking to yourself, Siobhan. You yeah. seem to be very, what I call, inclusive. Um, you've got absolutely, yeah. You've got, you've got drag acts. You've got uh, you've got women who are fond of other women. You've also got trans acts as well. Um, is that a conscious business decision or a, and a conscious philosophic pair position as well? I would believe in inclusivity for everybody. I mean, my my only the only thing that I say is, are they a good performer? That's all I care about. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I don't judge people on their sexuality, on their gender, on their color, anything like that. I mean, I want the best performers for that stage mm -hmm. and that that's simply that's simply all I want. And also, if there are people who would be maybe struggling, people who might have especially hidden disabilities, um, and that would be something that would be quite close to myself and Kate's heart, because both mm -hmm. myself and Kate would suffer from hidden disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm blind in one eye and Kate is um, Kate suffers from fibro and sometimes that can affect people's judgments of you so if somebody is like that we would we would definitely give them a chance if they're talented and we're also happy to take people on who maybe haven't got an act that's quite finished and we'll work with them we'll get rehearsal spaces we have choreographers who we could bring in to help them to get mm -hmm. them up to where we want them to go to get them on stage yeah, yeah. Kate I'm delighted to, uh, Siobhan will confirm this, I'm delighted to say I did bring one of the acts uh, to you that's uh, going to be on on the 17th and that's the uh, the awesome Carl Conilingus who I happened to come across. Um, so we're looking forward to Carl's debut with the, uh, the candlelight but I've noticed that there is less probably what we'll call um, drag kings than there are perhaps drag queens or even just uh, divas uh, yeah. in the sense is that something you would like to encourage people to uh, um, come to you with yeah um, so there is a much smaller selection of drag kings in mm -hmm. Ireland and, and elsewhere kind of as well everywhere. yeah mm -hmm. outside of Ireland um, drag kings are not as well noted or seen as the queens would be seen um but i i'm very lucky in that i actually know a lot of the kings who mm -hmm. are in ireland and um, like we have butch chastity is one of our resident kings they're going to be performing with us um then obviously we have carol um i myself have a drag King act as well that I Persona, do. I, we say. <laughs> um, who is Miggle D Bubbles, um, who will be eventually coming to the Candlelight Cabaret stage. Mm -hmm. We just haven't gotten there yet, but I would love to see more kings on mm -hmm. the stage. Yeah. Well, it, it, to be honest, in many, in many respects, the uh, the entertainment sphere mirrors what I my. Um, experience of the trans sphere there's a no, there's an awful lot more trans uh men to women than there are women to men so it's uh th there's not an enormous difference in that regard but coming back to yourself uh siobhan you've been um in this uh business for some time are Ooh. there good new i we we had um uh, we had um a few weeks ago, we had one of your acts on. It was a very young uh, drag queen. Um, are there many new drag uh, acts coming through? I mean, uh, a vocal reaction is not that old either. But I mean, are there many no, in say their twenties? There, there are, there are some, there are some new acts coming through. But I mean, we don't necessarily just look at drag. We we look sure. at anything that's a bit different, a bit unusual. I I personally, I have a big love for live performances. Um, or people who bring something like with, say, for example, Crimson, who's one of our acts, one of our returning acts. Crimson does burlesque, but Crimson always does really incredibly well thought out performances mm -hmm. with either a really funny message or a political message or something behind them. And I like things like that. I like things that people actually really put a lot of thought and effort into. So that's that's the kind of thing we go for. And we also go for anything that's a little bit quirky, yeah. a little bit different. You might necessarily see on your main stages mm -hmm. um, and something also that's going to get the audience going. Like well, yeah. we were quite good at that the last time. I mean, the last show, which was the Valentine's show, we did some very we did a very powerful number, which Kate did, which was about the topic of um, Sexual harassment and violence. Ago, um, sexual harassment. And we mm. did that very straight and very seriously to treat the topic with the, the mm. respect it deserves. But at the yeah. same point, you know, a half an hour later, we had um, one of our pole dancers doing the dirty dancing scene with the giant gingerbread man. Mm. So we like to kind of keep those two elements of the shows side by side. So it's not all in one bent and it has a little bit for everything, for everybody. Yeah, I just want to say that the act I was talking about, uh, uh, I had a senior moment with Nicky Stones, who of course was uh, just uh, uh, a complete live wire. So Nicky, I haven't forgotten your name. I'm just, um, you know, the memory isn't what it used to be. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kate, you're much, you're probably much more familiar with um, 
what goes on behind the uh, when the curtain comes down. Is it all, you know, girls supporting each other, or is there uh, an element of, shall we say, friendly competition there between the uh, the performers? Mm. Um, in the Irish community, it is very, very supportive. Everybody tends to get behind each other. There's very rarely any tensions or things going on backstage. Mm -hmm. um, we're very lucky in that we are extremely supportive. Now, there is always the odd drama, but that usually happens mm -hmm. outside of the stage. It happens stage. everywhere, doesn't it? And, yeah. But when you're actually backstage, everyone is very, very supportive. And that's always been my experience in the cabaret and burlesque well, world. I have to say from working in the Moat Theatre, and I've worked in the Moat Theatre as a volunteer for about seven years now, which is how we how we got in with that theatre. And Connor, yeah. who is the house technician in the Moat Theatre, and Connor's been working in theatre for so many years, both acting, technical and directing and he does the text for our show. And one of the comments he's made on the times he's worked with us is that he loves working with our crew because they're nice, they're pleasant, they're friendly. They come in, they get the job done, they know exactly what they want and they go home afterwards and everyone's grateful. Yeah, yeah. So that's the atmosphere we have backstage. And that's something we want to keep because we want to keep that kind of happy. Everyone's having a good time. Everyone's having fun. I mean, it is a job, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's, it's a tough job. People go out there, they put themselves out there for the audience so we want everyone to feel that they were well treated and that there was no tension backstage and that's something that's we, we discussed this with all of our performers and if there's any sign of that going to happen we we shut it down very very quickly yeah so yeah i want to ask uh, and both of you uh, can come in on this one but uh, before we came on i was uh, mentioning to um Siobhan about my love for the marvelous Mrs. Maisel and season four, I particularly liked because it was set in a burlesque club. And uh, what she did was she made the acts much more friendly, uh, much more female friendly with the result that they got in a much more uh, uh, diverse audience. And as they said, the women spend the money because they drink those drinks with the little uh, umbrellas and things like that. <laughs> so. What is your, uh, uh, if you like, your demographic, Siobhan, and uh, how, uh, are you getting that sort of uh, what uh, what my friends, the YGs, were saying? Was straight women coming to look at uh, uh, perhaps mm -hmm. lesbian women and uh, not feeling yeah. remotely uncomfortable and just um, wanting to be entertained? The first show we did was really interesting because the first show, and that was my first experience of burlesque, mm -hmm. and we got a lot of people from the burlesque as well as like most of Kate's extended family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of my extended family at the first show. Yeah. But the last show, because a lot of the burlesque community, the main burlesque community is Dublin based, we didn't get as many of them traveling down. So, mm -hmm. but we still got um, nearly three quarters full theatre for the last show, mm -hmm. and it was mostly Kildare people. So yes. we had a mix of a lot of women, but there was also a, a proportion of men there, including Kate's dad, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. but also uh, quite a few men by themselves. Um, a few men, um, I think a couple of me members of the, the LGBT community, because um, we do go for a queer friendly night because that's something else we're trying to promote. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So we got a nice mix, but yeah, I would say predominantly we would get probably what would be a cis, female audience hetero audience yeah. uh, we love those nights and they're they're great they're great fun they they throw the cocktails into them um the bar yeah. cake is astronomical in comparison to other nights because they're not yeah. um, and they go out and they have a great laugh and then they probably go off to a local nightclub afterwards and dance the night away and that's the kind of night that we like the most mm -hmm. well you you can rest assured i will be bringing two mature uh as far as I'm aware, heterosexual women who like those drinks with the little umbrellas. So, <laughs> very good. Yeah, yeah no, I, I have to say, I do find that, um, the, and this is this is me generalizing. So I know this doesn't include everybody, but um, a lot of the cis hetero females that we do get in, they love it and they go mad for and they usually are the most wild and most vocal mm. yeah. oh yeah in the audience yeah. from well, my they love experience the, 
there's a lot of what I would call the aesthetic to love. I mean, good burlesque has got great costumes. It's got great style. Oh. Um, it's got some and great music as well, as we will hear. So mm -hmm. let's talk about you've got a uh, you've got a big night coming up entitled A Night at the Musicals. It's going to be happening on Easter Sunday, if I'm correct, and that's the 7th yes, of April. Yes. So take your turns and tell us uh, who's going to be on. There's going to be some old favourites on and there'll be some new uh, acts as well. So, Kate, you uh, tell us about um, who people should look out for and who sh what should bring them all the way down to uh, Kildare to see? Well, we're going to have Bella Agogo, who yeah. is a big favourite. She's coming yeah. back to our stage. We're very mm -hmm. excited about having her back. Avoca Reaction is also coming back. Um, they are going to be co-hosting with myself. Mm -hmm. So myself being Lada Longs as my performer name. That's your uh, um, performance name, exactly. Mm -hmm. yes, the last show out, name. we kind of said we'd let we'd let Lotta and Avoca host together. And mm -hmm. their chemistry was great. They both, they can sing, they can mm -hmm. do it together as well. Mm -hmm. And it just worked so well. Oh, it's just so, so much fun. Why, so. why break what's you know, why break what's working? So let's keep going with that. Well, they're both yeah. naturals. So what you know, yeah. what can you yeah. say? That's exactly the way yeah. it was. And and both gorgeous looking creatures as well. So <laughs> oh, stop, Mick, you'll flatter me now. Ah, so, well, Flattering well, me. Yeah. I'm both, just both, mad, both both mad <laughs> books. The last the last <laughs> show we did, they did a number together where at the end of it I said, This is a love song. So yeah. you need to go to kiss if Bella and Bella was supposed to interrupt them and mm. Bella was late getting on stage and you could see the two of them going, oh, my God, what do we do here? Oh, so we were, were in hysterics. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah. The two of us were like trying not to laugh on the stage, but yeah, it was brilliant. So really happy to have them back. We mm. also have Crimson the Cram is coming back and um, Butch Chastity, who is our resident mm -hmm. drag king and puppeteer who's coming back um, and we have Santina Spitfire is coming back sparkling, to do some more sparkling. for Sparkling mm -hmm. Spitfire, mm -hmm. not Santina, yeah. sparkling, sparkling Spitfire. Spitfire. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then you've got um, another uh, act called MXTR, what's that about? So MXTR is um, a performer from um, across the water, all the way from Canada, America, wow. New York. New York. So they have performed on the drag scene in New York quite a lot and they've moved over to Ireland recently. So they're looking to do more performances over here. They have done the Dirty Circus. Um, they would be, I suppose, um, a non-binary drag artist would be probably the best way of describing okay. them. Mm -hmm. yes. But they sing live as well. Um, really talented, really interesting. Likes to kind of play a lot with gender boundaries and it, that kind of thing um and it's it's an interesting new act so we thought yeah why not mm -hmm. um kind of not along the lines of carl connie lingus but different yeah different yeah. type of performer but you know but it is and i i love when they sing live yeah. um and we also have daria daria decolette who's mm -hmm. um fabulous fabulous uh burlesker and pole artist mm -hmm. who um i believe is um entering miss burlesque ireland this year am i right Kate? Mixed yeah for that. yeah Mixed Mixed for that for that. yeah and yeah. uh, so, they're gonna be part of that this year um and have we forgotten anybody yeah. well look, look. Um, we have savannah valentine coming over from we the do. uk mm -hmm. yep um, so savannah's and, a burlesque uh, london burlesker and so alice apparently and alice apparently is coming uh, to the stage as well apparently. she's a dublin burlesque artist she's actually um mix horror 2020 very good so yeah. she's, yeah. she's still a fabulous performer yeah. look before we play out and i want to play out with the song that people will be able to hear on the night but you can see from the background and i took the musicals it's sunday the uh, 17th of uh, april in the moat theater mm -hmm. down there in nice what time yeah. does it start at seven seven okay and what time will it run until oh god only knows <laughs> um usually we finish around 10 yep. 10 10 30. Yeah, now this, this show is our biggest show yet because we've 11 acts we've never had 11 acts on stage and i think approximately 23 24 numbers between all of them um so we're still we're still working out the timing but generally about two hours i'd say two hours 20 minutes would probably be the running time Okay, uh, and it's 20 euros. Can people buy tickets on the night or do they have to go to Eventbrite? 
Um, it's actually it's actually through the Moat box office or on the okay. Moat Theatre website. Okay, apologies. Yeah. Them. yeah. Um, but if there's tickets available, they can certainly buy them on the door in the night. But that'll depend on whether or not they're available. Sure. But they'll yeah. know by going onto the website and to say if it's sold out or not. So the moral of the story is get in early and get in often, as we say. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Get in just, as many people as you can. Yeah. Just one last uh, um, piece of information for uh, our listeners and our viewers. COVID's back again in a big way in the sense that people are rife uh, with it. I know so many people who've caught it in the last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. Will it be wearing masks or what's the situation? Will there be certain... Uh, um, restrictions there as we say i mean at the moment we'd be following the guidelines that the government set in place um yeah so that will very much depend on what they come out with um i would say to people if they want to wear masks absolutely wear masks because i myself would always be very cautious when i'm going out i wear masks Mm -hmm. um but at the same point if somebody chooses not to we we can't do anything about that but i would i would probably encourage people for their own uh, safety the moral of know. the story is if concerned bring a mask that's the simple yeah, 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 gonna, exactly. and there yeah, was yeah, masks yeah. in the theater for sale as well anyway so yeah it's somebody who gets one and they get Kate, it i'm gonna let you have the last word we're gonna play out with a bit of a song which people hopefully will hear on the night introduce yeah. it um so this is from the movie burlesque mm-hmm. and some by share and it is welcome to burlesque well it has been a delight talking to both siobhan and kate today we look forward to seeing you on the 17th of april and we'll have you back at uh, lgbtq plus life very soon so take care and uh, you know as we say in showbiz break a leg thank you so Thanks much, so much we'll talk to you soon okay indeed we'll to take care soon. Show a little more, show a little less, add a little smoke, welcome to burlesque, everything you dream of, but never can possess, nothing's what it seems, welcome to burlesque. to the band. You may not be guilty, but you're ready to confess. Tell me what you need. Welcome to Burlesque. You can dream of Coco. Do it at your risk. Triplets grant you mercy, but not your every wish. Yes, it keeps you guessing. So cool and statuesque. Behave yourself, says Georgia. Welcome to burlesque. Legendary